There are two main reasons to supplementally feed, nutrition and attraction. When we are considering nutrition, we are talking about supplementing protein. For example, in South Texas, there's been research that showed that supplemental feeding with 20 plus percent protein can show increases in body weights and antler size. Now this is when other high protein food sources are unavailable, such as in a drought or a flood, and you're able to supplementally feed protein year round. Surveys of landowners and deer managers in Mississippi by the MSU Deer Lab have actually shown that at the rate that most people are supplementally feeding, that there is not been any gain in antler size or body weight. Most people were not feeding at a high enough level year round and that in Mississippi we often have better environmental conditions than places like South Texas that may be in drought. Protein feeding can still be beneficial to deer in Mississippi. However, it's much more productive and a lot more cost effective if you supplementally feed protein through planting food plot instead of using feeders. You can typically expect to provide 25 to 155 pounds per dollar using a food source such as clover or a summer food plot such as joint vetch or soybeans compared to protein pellets that often only provide about four pounds per dollar. When considering supplementally feeding for attraction out of a feeder, a high energy food source like corn is often chosen. However, in the south, this may have some drawbacks. Some of the research that the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fishers and Parks and the MSU Deer Lab have done together, we wanted to look at how mature bugs were responding to food plots and feeders. So we had a group of mature bucks that had just food plots within their home range. And then we had a group of bucks that had food plots and feeders. So when looking at how these bucks were moving when they had access to feeders, they were moving less, they were bedding down more, and they were moving more at night when compared to bucks that only had access to food plots. Hunters think by using feeders, they're more likely to see mature bucks. However, this research showed that when bucks only have food plots within their home range, Hunters are more likely to see those bucks within the food plots during daytime hours when compared to bucks that had feeders. Supplementally feeding deer is relatively new in Mississippi. Can supplemental feeding help? Well, yes, it can. Is supplemental feeding worth the risk? Because there are many risks associated with it. It congregates deer in an unnatural manner. Disease risk for any communicable disease within that herd is heightened with supplemental feed present. A few years ago, we surveyed every one of our DMAP clubs. Only significant difference we found was that the properties that are feeding actually harvested less deer on a per acre basis than the properties that were not feeding. Mississippi has been managing deer and quality deer for decades and decades, way before feeding was even allowed in Mississippi. And you can just take a look back at the Boone and Crockett record books and see how many Boone and Crockett bucks that this state produced back before feeding was even legal. In my career, I had, I've had the opportunity to work with some of the best quality deer managed clubs that this state has to offer. And none of these clubs that produce these quality deer put out feeders. So anytime um, you concentrate wildlife in an area, you're more likely to increase the spread of disease. And, and turkeys are no exception to that. Another thing we think about is the potential for aflatoxins and the in in effect that they can have on turkeys. Corn is a grain type that is specifically susceptible to getting the fungus that causes aflatoxins. Or, and it can cause a lot of problems. I have personally uh, collected specimens of sick turkeys in the wild that when we sent them to the lab they died of aflatoxin poisoning. Turkey populations are driven by reproduction and so a, a key component of that is survival of the poult and we know that poults are sensitive to aflatoxin. Research done here in Mississippi has shown that corn piles left out in the environment under a lot of normal weather conditions in our state are going to develop aflatoxins within about three days and after about five days of exposure aflatoxin levels exceed that at which is going to cause problems to game birds and, and turkey poults. And with in a week, oftentimes you're going to get levels that are extremely high that you know potentially cause severe damage. Coccidia, which is a, a, a family of gut parasite that have been shown in other game birds to cause population decline. In commercial poultry breeders, that can cause huge losses in chicken houses. That's and it's ex the exact same condition that wild turkeys can get, and that they can get that we have now confirmed to be five times more prevalent around feeder locations than at random in the wild. Out.